What's up, Cousaroos? We just watched two episodes of Minaria Friends, and I'm I'm torn on this one. I kinda like it, but at the same time, it doesn't really do much for me. What do you think? Do you think uh, you'd watch more of this show? Yeah, it's charming. It looks good. It's interesting. It it is interesting, but not interesting. Yeah. Like First of all, the biggest shock is that the show looks as good as it does. The background art is nice. It's nice and detailed. It's very richly designed. There's a good sense of uh, of place. Like the the set, it takes place at a school, but like a you know fantasy world school, sort of magic school. But it, I don't know if it's necessarily like a magic school or if it's just a school where people have magic because it's set in a world where people do magic that part's not that clear um but the two main characters are both princesses one a human princess one a uh dragonborn um she's got a tail and thick tail a thick tail and a couple of big horns she's also got some thick ass titties um but yeah these two girls are very Yuri for each other. No doubt this is intended to be a Yuri bait, if not just outright Yuri show, because the girls are all over each other. And they're good looking. The dragon girl is good looking. The other girl I am I mean, not so even sure if about. You, I just feel like they look good as characters. Sure, the character designs are good. And they, you know, um, they do a good job like drawing their legs and, and body. Yeah. And there's some good shots of their bodies. That is definitely true. I... Blonde girl's hair, I can't stand. Um, she looks a lot better. There's one shot where she's in, like, a dress, and she's got her hair done up, and she looks way better in that uh, outfit. But Dragon Girl... Neither one of them really works for me, because Dragon Girl, while she is very hot, has too big of tits, and she also has a tail, and neither of those am I that into. But, like, otherwise, she's really good-looking. But, yeah, they're... they're a cute Yuri couple. Some people will definitely find them insanely hot. I know there's a lot of yeah, guys who are going to sure. think the Dragon Girl is just the hottest girl they've ever seen. So, um, you know, most guys are into bigger tits than I am, I think. But, like, uh, so you've got, you've got these two girls. They kind of are just hanging out. It's very slice of life, almost Iyashike seeming from the two episodes we watched. Yeah. And the episodes are short. They're 15 minutes long, but it's it's odd because the first 10 minutes is one story. Then it'll play the ending theme, and then there's like a second little three-minute like short story afterwards. So you're basically getting one half-length episode and then one mini-episode for each episode. It's um, bizarre. Yeah, it's an interesting setup. This is, by the way, this is from Psy Games Studio. Oh. So Psy Games, the mobile game developer, who also, they they were involved in the production of Zombieland Saga, which was not actually based on a game. I had mistakenly said so. I just thought that because they were involved, but they're not. But now they have a studio. Um, they also did the Blade Runner short film, the 2022 or whatever, and now they're doing this as like their second proper show. So I think that probably a lot of the... Um, the ambitiousness of it comes from like trying to make a mark as a studio. Be like, yeah, that's right. We're fucking making this this really pretty, uh, interesting Monster world. Monster Girl, Yuri, Magical Girl yeah. show. <laughs> um, and it does feel very sincerely ambitious, even if I don't think it necessarily goes all. The Sometimes like the lighting effects in certain scenes aren't that great. The um, you know, there's nothing that special about the dialogue or anything. It, but, like, there are a lot of shots that look really good. And uh, I think the the school is pretty memorable. There, There's a part in episode two. The plot of episode two is, like, Dragon Girl is doing... She's, she's having some kind of sickness that looks like she's getting fucked, basically. Yeah. Um, she's and, moaning constantly. Yeah, and the other girl goes to, like find some way to help her. So she, like... Goes into the Forbidden Library. Which is, like, a disconnected floating bookshelves in space that looks just like something out of Nanoha A's. Um, and then, like, she goes on, like, this adventure through the school where, like, 
there's like a gate where she like puts her hand through a painting to open a gate and like all these just like weird magical things which we don't even know what she's doing like yeah. where is she going what is she trying to do which in the end doesn't matter because it turns out dragon girl was just molting um so you know spoiler i guess but like uh yeah, like, she goes on this whirlwind adventure, and it's not really clear what she was hoping to accomplish, uh, but she doesn't end up coming up with anything. But it was just an excuse to show a bunch of cool, little, weird, memorable, magical things, um, and, like, sort of give you a, a stronger sense of this world and how magic works. There's some side characters, but none of them have been on screen for more than, like, 10 seconds to know anything about them. Like, it's mostly fo focused on the two girls. All of the time. Yeah, there's, like, a lolly who's clumsy, and then there's a knight who is, like, shadowing the princess to protect her, and he's just, like, just there, you know? Um, so it's, like, none of the characters are particularly interesting so far. Um, the fact that it's Yuri-centric is nice. It makes me... It's easy to watch two girls be cute together, I guess, but, like, they're not interesting. So it's such a weird push and pull where it's like, the show is pleasant to look at, I have no real problems with it, but there's nothing about it that engages me enough that I feel like I would really want to come back to it. It's like, it's fine to have on. It's that 6 out of 10 kind of feeling yeah, of, like... I could watch this whole show, or I could not, and it will make no difference to me. Um, the, the question is just, would I do it? The fact that the episodes are shorter makes me yeah. inclined to think I could watch more. I mean, sh probably at the end of the season, when we do finish or fail, I'd be willing to pick this up again and just go for as long as we care to. Like, if, if we get four episodes in and it doesn't pick up, I'd probably just be like, fuck it, you know? Yeah, but, you got everything you're going to get out of it. But, yeah. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'd be willing to watch more of it. It's, it's easy to watch. Right. <laughs> uh, well, that's it for that one, then. See you in the next one. Grimm's Notes. This is my least favorite type of... Shuni trash. ...thing, which is where you take public domain characters and just come up with some dumb bullshit repurposing of all their stories into like technical terminologies and powers and shit and like because you're not talented enough to come up with your own characters yeah uh it looks bad is bad there's Sounds nothing bad, good tastes bad feels bad <laughs> you that's it that's all you have to say all right, well, we had to check out the first half of the first episode of W's, which is the sequel to Handshakers. They made a sequel to Handshakers, which is baffling in and of itself. Uh, if you didn't hear about Handshakers, it was a show from a couple... Was it last year or a couple years? It was a, a couple, couple years, years ago. ago. Um, that was By known studio for... Go Hands. Yeah. Who was probably named after... Um, what? Handshakers. Uh, no, they've been around for a lot longer than that. <laughs> but uh, they... Um, Are you sure? Yeah, they made K. They made uh, the Mardok Scramble movies, which all look like that. Are you sure, though, They that all look fucking terrible. It wasn't... Because they had this master, master, master vision. stroke in their back pocket. Yeah, they're yeah. like, oh, Handshakers is gonna take us all up. Gohan's is a weird studio whose style is that everything is as much digital effects as humanly fucking possible. Literally, the entire show looks like an OP. Yeah, it's, it's like, like a never ending OP. Everything looks crazy, but not in like a cohesive way. It's just a visual clusterfuck. And I love it. I love the way they're... That, well, not... I hated the way Mardok Scramble looked, because we tried to watch that at one point, and it looked so bad that we quit. Um, I don't know if you remember that. I don't even remember. We only watched, like, six minutes of it, and it looked so bad that I refused, because I, I like the, the light novel, and the manga looks way better. But, like, uh... Um, and I never bothered with K, but Handshakers was fascinating because... The visuals were this ludicrous, opulent clusterfuck of crazy shit going on, but a lot of it looked bad, like, on a technical level. Like, 
characters moving through depth of field would like be like morphing because they don't know how to draw a character doing that you know um if anything it lets you appreciate just how good other anime is by compa- like you, you realize how wrong it can go if you try to animate something you don't know how to animate you know yeah um so the animation was melting and falling apart but also it was crazy and a lot of fun to look at um, W's is a lot less shit looking than go than uh, Handshakers was. It's not as over the top with like what it's trying to do, but um, there hasn't been anything that's like horrifically technically wrong. It's more just bad taste, but bad taste that I share. Um, like the first episode so far has basically just been blasting pretty good hip-hop music over just crazy images of just, like, insane, opulent bullshit. Um, I think that if I had watched this when I was, like, a teenager, I would have thought it was fucking awesome. I would have thought this was the coolest shit ever, because everything looks crazy, and the characters are fighting all the time and flipping around and doing, like, crazy shit. You know, the camera's always panning around and... The music is just blasting over everything. There's no sense of pacing at all. They just no. let the music do the job for them. They're like, you don't need pacing if the music sounds good, which is almost true. Because as soon as the music finally cut out and there's like, like a normal oh, scene, no. instantly I didn't care anymore and couldn't watch it. I was just like, oh, well, now it's just like a show and I don't care. I don't want to watch a show. I just wanted it to be an OP continuously yeah. for as long as it could. Um, yeah, it's, you know... No one's gonna like this. No one's gonna look at this and be like, oh, this is great. Like, it's... I just wanted to watch it. I would probably be willing to watch Handshakers and W's for the meme to do some kind of video on it. Because I think people would love if there was, like, a, like, worst anime ever or something. But I don't... I would I would come down on the side of praising it. I would be like, look, this show is terrible, but it's terrible in a very endearing way to me as somebody who likes things that that are a clusterfuck, you know, cluster punk, that is. Anyway. Alrighty, we watched the first episode of My Roommate is a Cat. Do you like cats? Do you, are you one of those people who's like, you know, I raise a cat, but really it's more like the cat's raising me. Like, the cat is the one that really makes it so I can even make it through the day. You need to watch this show. Neko Neko Fujo, babe. This show is, uh, it is, it is as interesting, you say Fujo, babe, because it's kind of in a category I've not really seen before. Um, you compared it to Maid Dragon, but for women. And, like, that's kind of what it's like. It's like that sort of slice of life comedy um but where whereas like maid dragon is almost all female characters but it's obvious that it's aimed and towards is well written and creative yeah well, <laughs> well that show is like aimed towards men to project onto the main girl and there's a lot of shows like that like mm-hmm. shows aimed at men but with all female cast but where like the main girl acts kind of like the otaku audience you'd expect to be watching the show. This is the opposite. The guy seems like he is there for girls to project onto. And he's... Basically, he... uh, His parents died when he was young, which doesn't really seem to be related to anything that we see in this episode, but uh, he's super socially awkward. He doesn't want to be in public at all. doesn't want to be around people. He ends up picking up a cat... And the cat teaches him how to To eat food. Yeah, he's (laughs) literally so um, driven because he's an author and all he does is sit around and write and to the point where he will literally pass out from malnutrition. Um, And uh, yeah, I guess the cat is going to teach him how to rely on others through a fucking cat. It's just like uh, in, in Sangatsu when the girl had to go to rehab and it, it, she had to make friends with animals first, then people. Then old people, and then people <laughs> her own age. Yeah. Uh, maybe he'll go down a similar trajectory. But just the fact that all the characters that we saw in this episode were pretty boys. There's not a single female character. The cat is 
a girl and is voiced by a girl in the parts where she's in her own head. Um, but, like, it just gave me that feeling of, like, okay, this is definitely a show for girls, but it's not in that sense of, like, oh, it's just a bunch of pretty boys and you're watching pretty boys. It's, like, something you could actually project yourself into, and the characters are realistic enough. Like, I don't think this is a bad show in any way. I think it's perfectly yeah, fine. it's fine. I think it had a really weak first episode that failed to get me invested in any of the characters. Yeah. And also, like, to have the main character be so far along in his career where it just seems like he can... Do it automatically. Do it automatically. Yeah. It's kind of like, why do we need him to be a writer? Like... Yeah, it, I mean, it just comes down to that, like, it's all gonna be about him opening up socially because of this cat. Like, his career is taken care of. He's good at writing. He's popular. None of that's something we have to worry about. It's just him being brought out of his shell by this cat. Um, for me, it's just like, I don't like cats. So, like, this idea, this conceit of, like, the cat's gonna bring him out of his shell, I'm like, oh, great, I have to watch a cat. And then, like... The cat's not that cute. The, the last, it's like... kind of jank. The last 30% or so of the episode is from... Basically retelling the events we just watched from the cat's the perspective. The really mundane events. Yeah, and, like, I'm not a fan of this conceit of an animal having logical thoughts... Like, that could be translated into language, you know? Like, cats don't think in words. They just act on instincts and emotions in the moment. But they are not, like... The, the cat is not watching a human not eat and thinking, like, why doesn't he eat? I'll have to bring him more food. Like, a cat will instinctively bring you food because cats think... Well, first of all, they, they said it was, like, a tribute to the master, which is not the, the truth. The reason cats bring you food is because they are trying... They don't see you getting your own food, so they think you don't know how. So they're trying to teach you how to eat, basically. Like, they think you're stupid. It's not that they think you're their master, but that they... Which I guess... I guess from the cat's perspective, it did seem more like that. Like, she was... She was bringing him food because he's not eating, but, like, she's literally thinking about it. And it's like, I didn't need to hear the cat's inner monologue. Like, just make it just, act like a cat. Like, I didn't really have that much of a problem with the fact that it exists. It's just, like, why did it need to exist and what did it bring to the story? Yeah. Just that he wasn't eating. Like, we could have deducted that on our own. I didn't really think... Yeah, it did... It, like... Telling it, it from the cat's perspective didn't add anything to it at like all. it wasn't like we were looking at new material. It was the so. same events, just in the cat's perspective. And I mean, the only thing it added in was to give us more of the cat's backstory by having her, like, relate the events to some of her memories. Yeah, her template memories yeah. of being an animal that needs to eat to survive. So, yeah. I, I don't know, I didn't get anything It definitely, it. I mean, it really was just, like, restating what had just happened again, but from the mind of the cat. Yeah. Um, I don't know, I, like, again, the show is kind of doing the same thing Maid Dragon, like, in, like, a weird, in a weird way, like, uh, kind of that same kind of story, but it wasn't as funny, and it wasn't as, Yeah, like, it's, it's definitely trying to be, like, a cute little slice-of-life comedy for people who relate to this idea, for people who are socially awkward and have a cat, yeah, or then, or guess. want to fantasize about the same, uh, like personally, I don't like the conceit of having a cat for a friend is so asinine to me because I personally I don't like animals because they can't talk and they're not interesting. There's no such thing as an interesting animal because they don't have thoughts. They don't have language with which to communicate something and interesting. animals can be interesting in a story um, if they're, like, you know, well thought out or, like, the character's learning something about the animal. I don't know. I'm just thinking about all the penguins that are pets in anime, and yeah. I love I love it. Well, usually they're, like, a, they're not a main fixation of the story. I mean, it's usually never, just a penguin that's there. In somebody's life, you know? they're never really the main fixation, unless right. you have a mental illness and treat your, your pet like a, a baby. A person. Um, I mean, 
I don't know, I don't have a problem with stories even addressing like what pets do to somebody's life, but I just found the show to be really fucking boring. I mean, it was better bef- like, I wasn't as bothered until they went into the cat's mind and made it out like the cat is literally thinking about these things as opposed to just, you know, I mean, I guess you could say it's more just translating the cat's instinct. Like, in, in uh, San Gatsu no Lion, they would have the cat's thoughts, but, like, it was clear that they weren't literally thinking those things. It was just, like, a like a translation of what a cat would be thinking, you know? In this case, it's, like, there's a little too much, like, active train of thought. Like, there's a little too much, like, uh, human attitude in the way yeah. that the cat thinks, you know? And it doesn't you know? do anything, no. like... It doesn't add it's anything to the basic. story to do that. So it's kind of like, I wish you would have just kept it a cat. I would I wish yeah. you would have just not had it think and just, like, let us interpret its actions, which are easy to interpret because they're the, the actions of a cat, you yeah. know? Um, in any case, I mean, I don't want to complain about that too hard. Like, this show is fine if you are a cat person. I am not, it's so it's obvious. Like, but... it was clear to me from a pretty early point that I was like, okay, it's a show about a fucking cat. Like, I, I'm not going to get anything. I'd rather go watch Cathead Imako if I'm going to watch a show about having a cat roommate. Oh, we did an episode of Egao no Daika, or... I wish we didn't. The Cost of Smiles. Do you miss 2000s mecha shows? Here you go. It's back. I know there's some people who will probably be excited about that. Um, this, this harkens to the likes of... Like, well, I mean, the guy who directed it did Lagrange and, like, Fafner, Dead Aggressor. It kind of reminds me of, like, an Aquarion or a Macross. Like, it's one of these mecha shows where it it goes right into, like, the world building and clearly, like, establishing a setting. But, like, you can't really tell what genre it is, like, plot-wise. It's, it's a mecha show. Like, that is the, that's what it exists for. Slice of life military drama. It's, it's like, I mean, that's the funny thing about mecha shows, is that they basically use the fact that they have mechs to just kind of be whatever a lot of the time, um, to such an extent that it can be, like, hard to follow, because you're just like, what's, what's the point of all this? What's going on? Why are we, what, oh, there's mechs. These robots. Yeah, so that's what the point is. Um, you know, there's a girl who's the princess of... Or she's, like, about to become the leader. She's, she's like, 12, but she's, like, inheriting the role of leader of this country um, in a technologically advanced society. Where all the people are glow sticks. <laughs> yeah, she gives this intro, like, this speech at the start, and... To a, a crowd of what is just moving glow sticks, but she's not doing like an idol performance. Like she's just giving a very brief speech, uh, and there's fucking glow sticks going off and shit. It was it was very strange. It felt like a reused asset from an idol show or something. Probably. Um, but yeah, like throughout the episode, it's just kind of meandering through, like introducing us to the characters and the world. Um, all of which are, like, the world looks distinctive, but there's nothing original about it. It's like her parents, before they died, invented some new form of energy that is why they have good technology. But, like, nothing we see about the world makes it seem like life there is unique in any way. None of the characters act different from, like, regular people. Um, it just kind of seems like... They put some effort into art design, but not into, like, how this relates to the story, you know? Yeah. Um, at the end, there's a big mech fight uh, that's, like, a practice fight, you know? Um, and it's clear that what the idea of this show is going to be is that the princess is a tactician. That, like, she's learning about tactics, and she thinks about how to use the environment and, and come up with a tactical strategy, and then, like... The, her, like, lead knight or whatever, um, he is just, like, a headstrong, like, hard work and guts kind of guy who just rushes in and fights and, like, he just, he's just a, you know, he's just a badass. Just so, a boy. so obviously the dynamic of the show is mostly going to be about 
tactical battles where this guy rushes in and does the fighting, the princess sits back and plans, which I could see being a lot of fun if you're into mech battles. Like, I do think that mecha fans will probably like this show, assuming that it gets better, which I would imagine it would. It, it doesn't seem like it can't be good in any way, but, like... As somebody who's not a huge mech guy who, like, isn't inherently interested in watching mech battles, the mechs look okay. Uh, they do this weird thing at one point where one of them's head, like, extends out. And I think it was meant to be used as, like, a scope because he was using, like, a big rifle. And so it was, like, the head extended out. I don't know how that adds anything to its attack. Like, what? how does that change its abilities in any way for the head to stick out? It was really stupid. But, um, you know, the fighting is, like, it's not that well choreographed. It's not that good looking. It's, it's you know, CG mechs. They look okay. Uh, I, I'm not drawn in by this level of mech fighting. But, like, I know... There are other mech shows similar to this one that I drop usually in the first episode, but mecha fans usually end up having something good to say about it. Uh, so just give it a shot if you're a mecha fan. And I mean, you know, a mecha fan. You know who you are. Like, if, if you probably already are aware of this show, because if you're on M, I'm sure they're talking about it there, you know. Um, otherwise, I mean, you you were just like out of it immediately yeah. you were like i don't want to watch this at all um, i don't know there's nothing here for me i guess yeah there's not there's not really much here at was, all uh, pretty underwhelmed well we only got one show left let's get to it uh we made it like what is that six or eight six minutes eight. minutes into a uh, pastel memories um it, it's a show about what happens to Akihabara after the UN um, laws take hold or recommendations when Japan decides to get rid of all the otaku culture and uh, it, not even literally it's just it's just some boring shit I guess about like a, a post otaku Akiba maid cafe I don't know it's boring as shit I, my mind was constantly drifting it wasn't as heinous as I expected because it like has like a four point five on Mal and like it's it's not as immediately atrocious as that fucking mermaid show Bermuda Triangle or that other one that we dropped in that episode but it's easy just as fucking nothing so that's it that's the last seasonal that we had to look at wow and um I don't people keep asking. Uh, are we going to cover Mob Psycho 2? We already know we're going to watch Mob Psycho 2 because we, we just rewatched Mob Psycho 1 a few days ago. It was great. We both enjoyed it. You don't need to try it out. Yeah, there's no need to do it <laughs> impressions. We already know about Mob Psycho. Yeah. So we will definitely be watching that once it's over and then giving, you know, anything we didn't drop will get its second attempt. And if it's good, we'll make it to the end, and maybe I'll make a main channel video about it. If it sucks, we'll talk about it on Finish or Fail. Um, this was a surprisingly okay season in my book. Yeah. Um, I think we have, like, eight shows that we didn't drop. Damn. So Those that, shows. for me, is pretty good. You know, um, there was one time in summer 2015, I called that like the best summer season of all time and everybody was like how can you say that when you only watched nine shows and i was like normally i make it through like three shows or maybe four in a season tops like if i make it through more than five shows in a season it was a great season and you know aside from the fact that we already know mob psycho 2 is going to be good um there's been... Actually, let's just go through and list all the shows. So anybody who's tuning in now, last minute, I'll, I'll make a time code. In fact, I'll cut the clip. All right, this is your outro section where I talk about, if in case you were the skipping roundup. everything, what was what is what we are actually watching. We're still watching Shield Bro for Shield Bro Weekly. Um, it's been kind of iffy lately. 
just because the anime adaptation is not very good. But, uh, you know, still watching it. Mob Psycho 2, we're definitely going to watch. Hell yeah. Uh, Dororo, first two episodes were good. Um, hopefully I'm excited to try episode good. 3, because it's uh, Tezuka in that episode. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. There's It's switching back and forth between Mappa and Tezuka Pro for some reason. But, um, and that one's going to be 24 episodes, so that'll be around for a while. Um... Minaria Friends, we enjoyed enough to continue for, for now at least. It might get boring and we might end up dropping it, but the first episodes are fine. We'll probably check out uh, Piano No Mori Season 2 Although, since I like no the first one. Yeah, people have been telling me that the animation has gone utterly to shit. Uh, I'm kind of curious just to see it. I want to know how, how fucking crazy it's gotten. Um, Kemuri Kusa. I really enjoyed the first two episodes. Definitely want to see the rest. Yeah, looking forward to uh, it. Rinshi Ekoro-chan is a lot of fun. Virtual Sanwa Miteiru is my personal favorite of the season. And the Hulaing Babies. Uh, you're also probably going to be... I want to watch Precure. Yeah, watching Star Twinkle Precure. And was there anything else that you wanted to continue that no. I didn't... All right. So, yeah. Um, overall, decent... Sp oh, you also read all of... Yeah, I'm uh, caught up on Promise Neverland. Promise Neverland manga. manga. Um, uh, yeah. What do you think of it? Give it a... Just, just it for, for, for everybody who saw our video and then said, you gotta read the manga instead, do you think it was worth it? Yeah, there was some enjoyable moments in it. You know, it's a weekly shonen manga, so it's not really in my wheelhouse, but uh, I wanted to pick up some stuff that was currently, like, coming out and being published because it'll help me, like, keep on track with what like reading manga because it's something that I want to get more into um I like it uh and like I think we're in the last arc um right now oh um, so you think it's gonna end at some point I mean he the author has said that it's the last arc okay well that's bold yeah there's there's been progress made is the manga significantly better than the anime yeah yeah much better okay much better looking much better paced uh, it's way better than the anime. The anime is dog shit. Well, there you go. If you enjoy the anime, go read the manga, because apparently it's a lot better. That's it for seasonal impressions. We fucking, we motored right through it. Our, we, we literally couldn't <laughs> drop the habit from Finish or Fail. Like, as we soon needed as, more anime When Finish or Fail was over, we were like, fuck, we forgot how to live without doing this. I mean, this. yeah, we spent like a month straight just binge watching shows. More than that. It was like a month and a half of non-stop. Yeah. Um finish or fail so you can yeah. go back and do it the year before we could we could do that like that's the funny thing is that i always want to do that but then i end up trying to keep up with the current shit and then that takes too much I but mean, because we, have, we did like, this four weeks until the yeah. season's over and a lot of the shows that we want to watch are like too core so yeah um do you want to do that do you want to jump back and do finish or fail 2017 anime uh, maybe. Oh, boy. We'll see what happens, we'll see. everybody. See you in the next one.